Imagine walking into a quaint drugstore in 1893 and ordering a Brad's drink. That was the original name for what we now know as Pepsi. Created by Caleb Bradham in his North Carolina drugstore, this beverage was initially brewed as a delightful digestive aid. With ingredients like cola nuts and pepsin, it promised more than refreshment. It offered medicinal benefits. Little did anyone know this modest mixture was destined to become an iconic global brand. From a simple drugstore concoction to a global phenomenon, the journey of Pepsi begins with humble origins. By 1898, Brad's drink had transformed into something bigger, necessitating a new catchy name, Pepsi Cola. The choice wasn't arbitrary, it cleverly highlighted key ingredients that set the beverage apart. Pepsin, a digestive enzyme, and cola nuts, a source of caffeine, were thought to not only flavor, but also offer digestive benefits, making Pepsi Cola stand out in a market flooded with carbonated drinks. The renaming marked more than just a rebranding, it was a pivot point for the company. Until then, Caleb Bradham, the pharmacist and inventor of the drink, had been mixing this concoction in the back room of his drugstore in New Bern, North Carolina. But as the drink's popularity surged, the quaint drugstore could no longer contain its ambition or its operations. In 1903, the burgeoning demand led to a significant leap. Pepsi-Cola moved operations from the cramped confines of the drugstore to a rented warehouse. This wasn't just a change of scenery, it was the beginning of large-scale production. That year, Bradham took a bold step into industrial bottling, selling Pepsi in six-ounce bottles. The move paid off handsomely. Production volumes soared to nearly 20,000 gallons by the end of the year, a testament to the drink's soaring popularity. With a new name and a growing production line, Pepsi-Cola was gearing up to leave a mark on the beverage world. As Pepsi-Cola expanded, so did its marketing efforts, capturing the public's imagination with innovative slogans and endorsements. The turn of the century marked a significant era for Pepsi as it ventured into the world of advertising with gusto. In 1909, Pepsi made a strategic move by enlisting Barney Oldfield, a renowned race car driver of the time. Oldfield described Pepsi as a bully drink, refreshing, invigorating, a fine bracer before a race. This endorsement was part of a broader campaign that introduced Pepsi's first official slogan, delicious and healthful. This slogan resonated with the public, emphasizing the beverage's enjoyable taste and perceived health benefits, and it remained in use for over two decades. Throughout the 20s, Pepsi continued to evolve visually and conceptually. The logo underwent its first major redesign in 1926, moving away from its original style to adopt a more modern look. This change was a reflection of the times, as the brand sought to keep up with the fast-paced changes in advertising and design. Just three years later, in 1929, the logo was redesigned again, showcasing Pepsi's commitment to staying relevant and appealing in a competitive market. However, the 30s brought unprecedented challenges. The Great Depression had a profound impact on companies worldwide, and Pepsi-Cola was no exception. In 1931, the financial strain caused by the economic downturn and a sharp increase in sugar prices led Pepsi-Cola into bankruptcy. This was a dark time for the company, but it set the stage for a remarkable turnaround. Charles Guth, the president of Loft Inc., acquired the Pepsi trademark during this tumultuous period. After a fallout with Coca-Cola over syrup pricing, Guth was motivated to reformulate the Pepsi syrup, making it more appealing to the masses. This pivotal decision was crucial for the survival and future success of Pepsi. Despite its early successes, Pepsi-Cola faced significant hurdles, showing that the road to becoming a beverage giant was anything but smooth. Bankruptcy is not always the end, sometimes it's a new beginning. For Pepsi, it was the latter. In the early 1930s, the Great Depression had left the Pepsi-Cola company in dire straits. The company's financial woes culminated in bankruptcy in 1931, largely due to a soaring sugar price post-World War I. But from the ashes of financial turmoil, a new chapter began for Pepsi. Enter Roy C. Megergill, a businessman who saw potential in the struggling brand. He purchased the Pepsi trademark, determined to rejuvenate the company. However, despite his efforts, Megargill's attempts were not enough to fully revive the brand. It was then that Charles Guth, the president of Loft Inc., a candy manufacturer and chain of retail stores, stepped in after Megargill's struggle. 
Guth's takeover was not just a change in leadership, but marked a pivotal shift in strategy. After a falling out with Coca-Cola over syrup discounts, Guth was motivated to revitalize Pepsi's formula. He tasked the company's chemists with reformulating the Pepsi-Cola syrup, aiming to create a drink that could compete more directly and effectively against Coca-Cola. The new formula was a success, setting the stage for a rejuvenated brand ready to take on the market. With a fresh taste and renewed vigor, Pepsi began to position itself as a true competitor in the cola wars. Under new ownership and with a revamped formula, Pepsi was ready to challenge its rivals and seize a significant market share. What started in a small North Carolina drugstore has now burst onto the global stage. From its humble beginnings, Pepsi has transformed into a powerhouse in the beverage industry, and its journey to becoming a global empire is nothing short of spectacular. As Pepsi gained popularity in the United States, its sights were set on a larger horizon. The brand began to push its boundaries beyond national borders, aiming to quench the thirst of consumers worldwide. This global expansion was not just about spreading geographically, but also diversifying its product offerings. In the mid-20th century, Pepsi began to strategically acquire other beverage companies, significantly broadening its portfolio. One of the most notable acquisitions was Tropicana in 1998, which allowed Pepsi to enter the fruit juice market, appealing to a health-conscious audience. Mountain Dew came under the Pepsi umbrella too, adding a vibrant and high-energy drink that resonated well with younger demographics. But Pepsi didn't stop at beverages. The formation of PepsiCo marked a new era of diversification. By merging with Frito-Lay in 1965, PepsiCo became a leader not just in beverages but also in snack foods. This merger brought popular snack brands like Lay's Chips, Doritos, and Cheetos into the fold, creating a multifaceted global giant. The strategic acquisitions continued as PepsiCo went on to include other brands such as Quaker Oats and Naked Juice, each serving different consumer needs and preferences. This expansion strategy was not merely about growth, but was a deliberate effort to create a robust portfolio that could withstand economic fluctuations and changing consumer tastes. Today, PepsiCo's product lineup is astonishingly diverse, ranging from sodas and snacks to breakfast cereals and protein shakes. This diversification has helped PepsiCo to maintain its position as one of the leading global food and beverage companies. Pepsi's evolution from Brad's drink to a cornerstone of the global PepsiCo empire is a testament to innovation and strategic market adaptation. From a digestive aid to a cultural icon, Pepsi's journey is a remarkable tale of resilience and reinvention. Starting as Brad's drink in a humble drugstore, it was reborn as Pepsi-Cola, capturing hearts with its unique taste and effervescent spirit. Through strategic marketing and bold branding, Pepsi became more than a beverage. It evolved into a symbol of youthful exuberance worldwide. As we've seen, its legacy is woven through decades of innovation and cultural connections. Every sip of Pepsi not only offers a taste of its refreshing flavor, but also a sip of its rich, effervescent history.